Okay, this video we're going to go over swapping out your standard 11 inch uh, column bed for a 15 inch column bed and screw. So when you upgrade to the 15 inch, a couple things on our, our saddle assembly. The most critical part of the saddle assembly is having the saddle nut alignment to the lead screw correct. If it's out of alignment in any direction, it's going to cause binding. So this is a, this is a, a an area where our guys at assemblies do it very, very well. But if you're a, someone doing it for the first time, you're going to have difficulty with it. So first and foremost, when you're taking this apart to swap out your bed and screw, do not loosen any of these screws to the saddle nut. Just leave that the way it is, and you won't have any problems with taking this apart and putting it back together. Okay? So we have a column here. First thing we want to do is uh, loosen the set screw. This is a 3 seconds uh, Allen wrench. Loosen the set screw for the gib. And then we have our handy gib adjustment tool. Uh, basically it's just a plastic rod so that you don't damage your your bed or your saddle and if you just put it onto the you have the fat end of the gib and the, sh the skinny end, you put it on the skinny end just tap it a little bit and you can see the gib coming out. Okay, there you go. So it's actually out all the way which it doesn't need to be but anyhow so the gib is loose right now. The next one we have a 1032 uh, 82 degree flathead screw that locks our thrust collar in place on the top of the bed. Because it's got an 82 degree taper when we lock this down, when we assemble it, the 82 degree taper holds it even tighter than a normal screw would. So if you use a regular Allen wrench and you put it in here and make sure it's a nice new Allen wrench, no rounded corners, if you put it in and you're trying to break it free and you're bending quite a bit on your Allen wrench and it's not breaking free, if your Allen wrench is moving off to the side, which is typical of using this style Allen wrench, you're likely going to strip this out. So the better option would be a T-handled Allen wrench like this. You can insert it directly into the, into the screw. Hold on a minute. Okay, and then your force is straight into the screw and it just breaks free, like so. So we take this guy out. So right now this entire assembly just comes straight off. Okay, so that's our assembly right there. And our gib is still stuck to the bed. Then we just take the bed off. Just four 1032 screws that hold the bed in place. And whether this is a, a our standard manual column or a 2000 column, it's still just four screws that hold it onto the mounting surface. And the bed and saddle assembly is the same on all of our machines. Same goes for CNC. The CNC is going to be a little bit different as far as how this all goes together, but for changing it out, it's all going to be the same. So next one, okay, what I want to do is we'll move this out of the way. So I want to sc screw the lead screw all the way out of here. And this is a, a left hand thread, so you're going to turn it clockwise to unscrew it. Yeah. Then. Seconds, one sixteenth. Is that our guy? 
for the top screw into the hand wheel, if you've got a, an adjustable hand wheel, it's going to have the screw right here and also the screw through the side. If it's a regular standard hand wheel, you're just going to have the set screw from the side. So on this one, we have to remove the top screw, which should break free rather easy. Then what you want to do is unlock the collar and find the hole, the access hole, then turn your hand wheel until you see the set screw hole. And again, this is a 3 30 seconds for the set screw. Okay. Whoop. You're going to break that free. Remove this top screw entirely. So your hand wheel comes off. This has got a thrust bearing on it. So you want to keep all this, the thrust bearing's got grease on it so it generally stays in place. But you want to keep all those components together. And that screw is now removed and we're going to put the new screw on. Before you put, before you put the new screw on, what you want to do is make sure it threads into the saddle nut easily. And again, this is a left hand thread so you're, you're turning left handed to get it in. Sometimes what will happen is when these screws are made and it's parted off, there will be a slight burr on the lead edge of the thread. If it does not thread in easily, then what you want to do is get a jeweler file or a needle file and either a triangle shape or a blade shape. And if you have a slight burr, then just put it into the thread and just file all the way out to the beginning. And that will remove whatever little burr there is at the beginning of the thread. And usually if there's a burr there, you can feel it with your fingernail. If you put your fingernail up about a thread or two and you just spin it out, you'll feel the burr at the end. You just need to file that part out there and you'll be fine. So this guy threads in easily, which is what you want. So we shouldn't have any problem with the assembly. So now we'll put the uh, hand wheel back on. Okay, for starts, it has a washer that goes up against the shoulder. Okay, that washer has to be there. So I put the washer on first. Uh, then you put the thrust collar back on. And the thrust collar has the needle bearing is still inside there. Then we have the top washer that goes onto the needle bearing. Uh, on this particular one, we have a shim washer. Some machines have the shim washer, some don't. If it's there, use it. If it's not there, don't worry about it. You don't need it. It's just for spacing. And then we put our hand wheel back on. should be all the way down. Once it's in there, you're going to have to tighten up the top screw because the head of the top screw is actually hitting on your locking screw right here. So we'll start tightening this down. That just screws in. And you should be able to screw it in until you don't see until it's a snug fit right here. So you go snug on this, then turn this clockwise. Oh, that's not turning. So just snug on this. All right. And then once that's snug, then you tighten your set screw the side of the handle. So as far as the backlash, mechanical backlash, when you tighten this screw, that sandwiches this entire assembly right here. The screw, the washer, the thrust collar, 
the bearings, it all gets sandwiched when you tighten this screw right here. So you get that snug to get rid of any mechanical backlash, and then you're tightening the side screw to lock everything in place. So that guy's set right there, and we're looking good. Okay, got a good turn on it. There's no slop. All right, next, first thing, if your machine has the backlash uh, locking lever on it, which most of them do now, okay, if you look at the, let me wipe this off. If you look at the lever, one side has a little indent that lines up with the ball, if there's a ball in there. The other side has no indent. The indent side has to go towards the saddle nut. Okay, if it doesn't, then your your threads are not in sequence with each other. Okay, so first we're going to thread the locking lever on, so the indent is facing down. Okay, this part is a little tricky. First of all, I want to get my pivot pin out of here because it keeps getting in the way. And we'll put that in before we thread the rest of the way back, the rest of the way through. If you look at the saddle nut, if you look down, it's got a nice big chamfer on the top. If you take a small Allen wrench or a small pin and actually follow the thread, it's left-handed, so it's going to come out of the saddle nut, you can see exactly where the thread starts. And on this saddle nut, it starts right about there, which we showed in the close-up. Okay, so that's the start of the thread of the saddle nut. Just keep that in mind. The start of the thread on your lead screw, you follow it just like you did when you were filing it, and your fingernail and bring it out, and the start of my thread on the, on the lead screw is right about there. What I want to do is bring my locking lever down so it's about half a turn away from coming, or a half a thread away from threading to the end of the, the lead screw. Because the saddle nut sits down lower than the top of the saddle, you can't spin your locking and adjusting arm 360 degrees. So you're going to start with the locking arm off to the side here, because fully locked is going to be this position here. So you're starting with it over here. Then you have to get your lead screw started into the hole. Okay. So right there, I'm threading out too far. I have to bring it in again. Okay, right there's a connection. So I've got the lead in started right there, and there's just a minor gap between the lock and the saddle. And as I thread it in, it's not spacing out, which means I've got them both started correctly. Go in a couple threads and then make sure that this guy, that's your locking position, in the ball D10 is your unlock. So we're good right there. So that's looking good. So I'm going to put it in the unlock position, start threading it through. I have to put my pivot pin back in or I won't be able to go in there with a lead screw threaded through. So we'll thread this guy down quite a ways. If you put a little bit of oil on this, three and one, it'll help it help the assembly process go easier. Just a couple couple drops at the beginning and that'll work its way all the way through. Once you get it assembled you'll put your oil in your oiler and that'll take care of it. So because we didn't move any of this, our alignment between the saddle and the bed is going to be just what it was, the same as it was on the original bed. So we'll be good there. And then 
going to take the bed, wipe off all the rust preventative. And I'm going to put, put this guy in here. You've got 60 or 55 and a half degree side and 45. So the 55 and a half is the side your bed goes on. Put the lead screw down the middle, slide your bed onto it. Your column thrust has a set screw hole. Just get it pointed towards the front. Let it drop down inside. We'll put the 82 degree screw back in. This just has to be snug. It locks again because of the 82 degree taper, it locks up tighter than a regular screw would. Right now, I'm going to put my gib back in. So, the gib you have obviously thin side and fat side. As long as you put it back in the same way you took it out, you should be good. Okay, when you put the gib in, if it rides up like this, if it's up above like this, it's not in properly. So what you want to do is hold the top surface down as you push the gib in, align the gib pin with the hole. And you might have to back out your set screw a little bit. Make sure that the, the gib pin itself, give you a visual, the gib pin goes in and it has a tendency of stopping when it gets to the set screw hole. It's got to go all the way past the set screw hole so the set screw is, is going on the full gib surface, not just at the end where it will cock the gib out, the gib pin out. So this guy, and you should, the, as far as the fit on the gib, it should basically be to the same place it was on your, on your last bed. These beds are all ground within a thou of each other. Okay, so once that's there, tighten down the set screw. Now your gib's not moving anywhere. It's the same distance above the saddle. It's nice and flush all the way so you know your gib position is correct. Once that's there, then you can turn your hand wheel. Make sure it feels good. Okay, and that's feeling good in both directions. So we know that our saddle alignment is correct. Next part is you just put it back onto the bed. Make sure that these surfaces are clean or you're going to have uh, problems squaring up your head. Make sure this surface is clean on your column or on your rotary column on the 2000. And just get your screws started. Put one in. Get it started. And then get the rest of them started before you tighten any of them down. That way any minor misalignment will be taken care of and all your screws will start without stripping out the threads. So they're all set. When we, uh, when we assemble the column in our manufacturing shop. We set this on a granite plate and we have a fixture that goes on here and we use a machinist square to square it up. Uh, you, you're not going to have that or most of you are not going to have that capability. So if you leave these loose you'll see that there there is some wiggle okay so for fine adjustment I would just set it down like so wiggle it a little bit and see where center of the wiggle is and lock it down there and that should have you in the ballpark until you can sweep your machine in which you're going to want to do once you get this assembled and the instructions for that are in our manual right now we just took all the rust preventative off I would put a couple drops of 3-in-1 oil on all four bed surfaces, all four ground surfaces. All right. And 
work it up and down. And then at this time we can also, you can also put oil in your oiler and it'll start oiling the screw. Alright. So there you have it. Your alignment is good and the friction in both uh, up and down direction is the same. There's no binding anywhere. So you now have your 15 inch screw and bed. Thank you.